Hi, everyone. Um, welcome. I am Carla Sisenko. I'm an editor at Us Weekly. I'm so glad to see all of you. I'm so glad to be talking about this film. Um, uh, without further ado, please help me welcome to the stage writer, director, star, Alex Wolf. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I actually left out one of your credits because you also contributed music to the film. Yeah, I noticed that. I was really upset I'm about sorry. it. No, I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> um, OK, so you wrote it. You directed it. You star in it. Let's start from the very beginning. Where did the idea for this movie come? How did it all come together for you? Well, first I want to say thank you so much for coming. This is like so cool. Such a great turnout. And um, you know, I'm a, a, yeah, thank you for coming out. I'm I'm someone who is not just like uh, doing a bunch of exhaling in terms of art. I am a huge, you know, big just fan of all types of acting, and so uh, there's no one I respect more than everybody who's actually getting up every day and doing this as a job because it is. You can leave uh, every day feeling a little crestfallen. Um, even if you're working, you can feel like you messed stuff uh, messed up mess stuff up every day. So the fact that you guys are actually like doing it, I just feel like we're all part of a sort of heartbroken but driven community. So yeah, I just wanted to say that. Uh, the idea of the script really started when I was um, 15 and I was writing it basically to avoid studying for my finals. It was like a distraction thing uh, and I was going through a very particular time in my life um, and and my relationships with some people around me, like my godfather, who is a jazz um, saxophonist, and my dad is a real jazz pianist. Uh, th uh, the relationships uh, felt like they were at some crossroads or something. Uh, and at the same time, I was I met this kind of group of kids who were showing me around the city. And and you know, I've been acting since I was a kid, but nobody really wants to hire somebody who's um, 14, 15, 16. Um, and then sometimes you start working when you're 17, but really everybody wants an 18 year old to play younger. So I wasn't really working. Um, and so I really, all I had to do was either study for finals or like write something to do something creative. And I chose to write something. And uh, yeah, and that's really it. And also I had just um, read this poem by Yeats and, uh, and it really moved me and it felt like where I was at in my life, some kind of transitional period. Um, Maturing and, and also I'm an insomniac and so I was Me writing too. at like four in the morning. So. I bet there are a lot of insomniacs in the room. I feel like New Yorkers, Total. actors, creative types. Yeah, the night is just when everybody like shuts up for a second and then you, you can write. But um, yeah, it would be like the sun would be coming up and be like, oh God, I've been writing all night. Um, I better study for this biology quiz. <laughs> it looks like you made the right choice. I think it's probably Thank okay. you. Um, so this is your directorial debut. What is it like, I've always wondered, as someone who's not an actor, to direct yourself? I mean, I guess my question is kind of... Every take part. is perfect. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, it's the opposite. Um, I guess, you know, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, um, but... What? <laughs> Somebody said something, and it sounded clever. I was going to give you a mic to say it. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it to someone who doesn't love acting so much and and I, I really feel like the I wasn't set on directing this I wrote it for myself um, uh, to play the role and the role sort of developed over time of what it would be and then I, I ended up having to gain like you know 30 something pounds for the role and um, shave my head and got a bunch of tattoos um, which last forever which I didn't know nobody told me um, but now I have a bunch of tattoos for this um, movie uh, but but then through that, I just, a lot of people like Peter Berg, who uh, I knew, who had read the script and said, you know, this is really personal and you should really uh, direct it. And I gave it to Noel Baumbach and he kind of said the same thing. And then I kind of just talked to people and I said, why don't you just make it? I mean, the worst that can happen is that you fail, you know, uh, you already have the script and why don't you just do it? And, and uh and so I guess the, the, the advice that I'd have if you're going to do this is direct the movie before you've made the movie, in a way. Uh, like, I had a, the most disgustingly detailed shot list in the world, um, like, months before we started filming. And then when you get on set, toss it out. You know, you have to kind of work around. But having that preparation, like, my preparation was... 
like these this shot list would make anybody like crazy it has little pen marks it's like 70 pages long it's like the camera tilts slow left we go to a it's like really annoying but um then when we started making the movie you know you adjust it and you start letting improvisation happen so i guess that was really helpful for me and we all called each other the character names for about three months and um and all the guys lived in the house together um so that really, really? helped yeah yeah, I, my parents' house. I was trying not to mention that, but it was my parents' house. Oh my we were all God. living. We were all living in my parents' house. So you shame at who like? So me, the guy yeah, Skyler and uh, uh, Skyler Gisondo and Tommy Nelson were all staying. Julian, uh, who played Skyler, it's confusing. Uh, he had his own apartment. He's a real adult, and the three of us were just staying. <laughs> <laughs> we were just staying in my parents' house, and my mom would make us breakfast, and yeah. Oh, that's Nice. Yeah, it was nice. <laughs> Except when I was like trying to direct the damn movie, and they're like, <laughs> they're like, and hey, hey, you see that new like Drake video? I'm just like, shut up! I have to figure out how we're gonna shoot this scene in a bathroom in an hour. That's good for your dynamic, though. I guess it's perfect. Like teenagers, right? <laughs> it's perfect. Um, so you mentioned the word improvisation, which is something that I wanted to ask about. The dialogue is something; it feels so real. I, I think I noticed it the first time in the roof scene when you guys are sitting around, and it's the first time that you. Um, Skylar kind of presses you to talk about That's my favorite scene in your the parents. Movie, yeah. It's I mean it's beautiful and it felt incredibly authentic and so I was curious how much is straight dialogue from the script and how much of it is improv and ad libbing. That's really cool that you like that scene. It's it's a uh, cuz cuz that scene actually worked really hard on that. Like that cuz it seemed like just a oh they just found a way and we we spent all day on that scene trying to figure out exactly what it was like because it's hard, a confessional scene with friends, and so I had to be, and I just love the city in the background, and I wanted to make it so I could go super wide, and all the stuff that was going on around would fit in the same universe, and you're almost, you don't know exactly who to look at or who to focus on, but you go, oh, something really tense is happening in here, and then out here, something really kind of funny and relaxed is happening, and so I liked having to hunt for the seriousness. It just reminded me of like um, in the 70s like I loved in Dog Day Afternoon you'd be like watching somebody in the background and then that becomes the thing that's uh, important so I really got to like that I mean I loved the actor I mean I just thought the actors were so amazing so I was definitely not strict about dialogue really I was just really strict about like beats so it was really important that like he would say, uh, but dog, still, you didn't say like where are your parents and I have to go huh, it's not my favorite thing to talk about you know and having to pull back but in terms of the actual like wording and stuff I mean it, it would be so silly to make a movie that's supposed to feel like it's really happening and you have these friends who are really getting along and form their own inside jokes so why would I impose what I thought they would you know like they're living in a house together maybe they have some inside joke about the fact that they both are in love with my mom which they were um, and so like they were giggling about that in certain points in the movie I won't say when but there's like lots of times like they'll I don't know, be laughing about stuff like that, and I want to catch it on camera. Like, why would I, you know, and, and I guess that was my main incentive for the movies. I like watching movies where I feel like things are really happening. All What's right. up? Thank you Thank so you. much. I needed it. Read Thank my you. mind. Um, you guys want some? Yeah, I was going to say. Um, so you mentioned Peter Berg, who um, has directed you, right, and is also an EP on this film. Um, at the end of the film, you thank Noah Baumbach, your mom, who you've mentioned, Polly Draper, is not only an actor, but also a director, who has also directed you. Mm -hmm. um, so, what kind of advice did they give you? You're kind of like, you've got this embarrassment of riches of, of people who really know what they're doing. When you decided that you were going to direct this, um, what kind of stuff did they tell you? Like, what, what kind of advice did they give you? Well, I guess the big advice that they gave me was to do the movie and then they were kind of like bye <laughs> and i was just you know, like what do i do um i mean you can give people you can give people advice but until you're there on day one and you're you know like in the first so i had to do all the stuff with mike in the first five days so we had this you know crazy emotional scene on like day three of the shoot um, and so, I mean, no one can prepare you for that. It's just a whole different thing. And I came in and Mike was like, let's cut five pages out of the scene. I was like, okay. Um, and I love Mike, but he was right. And, and I had to kind of make that decision on my own. And it was really scary. Uh, but, but no one can prepare you for that moment. But at the same time, like, I am the luckiest. I mean, I felt like the luckiest person in the world that I had such great actors who were so full and so loose and so not 
stiff. And I guess my whole thing was like, I was okay if the actors, you know, said something that had nothing to do with what I wrote, if it was immediate and it was full and it was real. I just didn't want anybody to be um, in a box or in a, you know, I just wanted the whole set to feel watery and moving and, um, and yet I did not want it to ever die. I wanted the stakes to stay high and an anxiety to pulse through even the stuff where they're hanging out, which it does for me. I'm very anxious watching the whole movie yeah. for me. It definitely does because you, you know <laughs> that there's this like potential that your character that like Nick's gonna explode at any point and you feel it in the cab. Oh my god, the cab is a very anxiety provoking. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm Peter Berg was there at the premiere last night and he was like, Yeah, that cab scene is like really hard for me to watch it as is. a parent. He's like, it's just like yeah, he says the whole movie gave gave him a near anxiety attack. He's seen it like three times now. He's just every time he's just like that with his <laughs> I'm like, dude, have you seen your movies? Like your movies are that's so <laughs> intense. That's a good point. Um so um you're a frequent collaborator with your brother Nat. Your mom has directed you. Your dad, Michael Wolf, is a jazz musician and collaborated with you on this. What are the um, pros of working with family and what are the pitfalls of working with family? No pitfalls. Really? No, I'm kidding. I mean, um, <laughs> I know I genuinely would say that I get along the best with my family when we're working together because there's nobody I respect more. Like, my family is just like. My brother and my mom and my dad are just really talented. Just objectively, they're just super talented people. And um, I don't even like them, but they um, are super, super talented. So I love working with them. Um, it's just hanging out with them that's the problem. Um, just kidding. I love them all. They're great. Uh, but when you really, really respect uh, people, whether it's your family or whether it's your friends or great actors, it just doesn't really matter if they're related to you or not. Like, you know. My mom gave birth to me, but like I don't feel like I would say the line that way. So you, you know, she listens, and we kind of, you know, have to figure it out. But it really also matters who's you know. I, my brother helped me produce this movie. My mom is the quiet voice in the background on the phone. But my mom, you know, didn't help in the production side because uh, I kind of wanted this to be more like my mom was a big fan of the project, and I wanted that more than to get involved. But then, you know, like my brother would have opinions, but he'd know, okay, this is my thing. But like, you know, if he's doing something, then he, he's got the final say. And I don't know, it's just very important who's in power. But we all know no matter what, I make the decisions always for everybody. Sure. Because I'm the yeah. loudest. Oh, is that right? The loudest, and I got the biggest mole. So if you have the biggest <laughs> mole and biggest nose and you're the loudest, you get to m call the shots. That's good to know. <laughs> I feel like that should go on a motivational it's on your. It's something. on my birth certificate. There you go. Um, so you're guys. I'm dishing gold. <laughs> you are laughing at a five, six. I'm dishing a nine. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> what was I gonna say? No, I'm just thinking. About I'm just insulting the crowd. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just it's kidding. Late. It's, you know, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's a late night in New York. Yeah. Um, you're 21 years old. Yeah. And I mean, you've had your, you've had a crazy career already. You've Thank been you. working since you were little. Um, it, like, what is your dream? Is it like, I imagine that this is the dream, that you're living the dream right now, like that this has to be like the passion project. What do you do when you've done your passion project at 21? Like, do you already in your mind know like the next thing that you'd really like, love to do? I feel like, I feel like uh, there's a lot, a lot of things I want to do way better than I've done them before. And like, I feel like I'm hitting 50 or 60 of what I'm, like not even close to where I kind of want to be. I want to be much better at, at much higher level and a much, you know, so I guess hopefully I just get better, more relaxed. And um, I've learned to love movies more too. Like I, I just watch every movie. I'm just obsessed with movies. So I guess hopefully in, in the future, I just get to see like more great movies. That's my plan. That's a good plan. That sounds great. Um, I have a question about one of your other movies. So Hereditary which I'm sure most of you have seen. Yeah. You've seen it. <laughs> One clap. <laughs> Hereditary, I won't spoil too much for those of you who haven't seen it. You should see it immediately. Maybe not at night. See it tomorrow. It is the scariest movie I've ever seen in my life. Whoa. True. I swear to God, I, I, was, I was kind of like destroyed by it in a good way. What is it like to film a movie that terrifying? Well, it was more upsetting than terrifying when we filmed it, you know. I think a lot of the terrifying 
ness of the movie came from maybe the real uh, raw emotions that were coming out of us and the terror within, you know, the real things that were happening. Uh, so I guess to me, it just felt like a really heavy, traumatic, emotional drama, uh, like kind of on crack. Uh, and then when I saw it, I was like, whoa, it's really scary. And I didn't quite realize when I was making the movie, it was more just um, emotionally uh exhausting um that movie um yeah i definitely haven't done that many just easy going chill uh movies but but i'm so super proud of that movie i'm like so lucky that i was in that movie with ari and, and gabriel and tony and millie and everybody was just so great in that movie yeah it was it was i think that's the right way to describe it it was kind of devastating it was like just bleak it was you know yeah. um but you've done a lot of different kinds of movies so you're also in the jumanji franchise so there there's the big budget stuff there's the kind of dark horror there's indie stuff like what it, you've done so many different kinds of projects is there a particular favorite type of thing that you like to work on or are they all just so is it so completely like apples and art is working on jumanji so completely unlike working on you know the cat in the moon is it all just kind of gravy uh i feel like it's uh it's really all the same it's just um and all drastically different it's not like there's a huge difference between a small budget movie and a big budget movie except like better craft service um like better food <laughs> it's literally like the only difference because you're still you know have the same pressures the same anxiety same um self-doubt and uh you know uh and and you can feel like i did this play like i did this big budget movie like years ago uh and i felt like I don't know, it just felt like cold and I felt like it was small and nobody's gonna see this, what am I doing? And then I went and did a play uh, in New York and I felt like this is the most important thing in the world. But there were like 150 people in the audience of the play um, and like probably millions of people saw the, um, probably more than that, the, the bigger budget movie. So I think it just kind of all depends on what you hold valuable, you know? Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't really, it doesn't really affect me either way, like in terms of the difference of like budgets and, but it definitely is a difference between when you're doing like a fun, funny movie like Jumanji, which is one of the kind of the few I've gotten a chance to really have fun uh, and uh, a more darker movie. There, you know, there is some emotional difference, but it's all this, I mean, you get super nervous on a comedy set and trying to be funny is impossible. Um, it's kind of the same thing as the other stuff. Yeah, it's super hard to be. I mean, it sounds. I make it look easy. No, I'm kidding. no, it's it's like it's really like. I mean, it's a tough thing. That all, all I feel like all making movies are kind of hard for me I, at least. I, I'm sure that's. I'm sure that that's true. Having never tried to make one, it's um, probably not hard in the scheme of like work. I'm sure like a lot of things are way harder, but well, um, right. it's I'm, just a little harder than you might imagine. I think. I'm sure it's incredibly hard. I mean, right? It's just a different kind of hard. Like it's not lifting. Things. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's only construction work. work. That would be actual art. Um, we have a couple of audience questions. Awesome. Um, Do we get to see who asked them? I, well, sure. If they'll, I, if they're happy to identify them. Show yourself. George Field. Are you here, George Field? Hey, George, George Field. Field. Front hey. row. So better be good, George. All right. No pressure, George. <laughs> Starting out, did you self-represent or have an agent slash agency, and if so, which one and why? Thank you, Alex. That's nice. Oh. Um, uh. Did I self, uh, what, do, what do you mean? Did I, like, did I have an agent in the beginning? Well, I didn't, I, I didn't have an agent in the beginning, but then I got um, signed when I was young. Um, Naked Brothers Band uh, came out on Nickelodeon when I was a kid, and so I signed um, with agents in the beginning, and then I stayed with uh, them till now. I've been with the same people since I was a little kid, which has its pros and cons. They know me so well, and they've seen me go through puberty and not working and working a lot, and it's kind of funny. It's like, it's like family. They really know who you are. You can't get away with much. Um, but I like, I like staying with people. I like to keep the company that I know. It's too scary the other way. Well, and you've worked with um, some of the actors in your film before, right? And you, yeah. and you is, I, I imagine that that, no. I know that that is purposeful because you are the director and the writer. Um, is that something that you'd like to continue doing? Like almost have like an ensemble or like a troupe? That would be so cool. Yeah. I mean, all my favorite directors, like Igmar Bergman, it's like so awesome seeing Liv Ullman do like 30 different roles and B.B. Anderson, all of them. Um, 
uh, yeah, I mean, I would love, I would love that. That'd be amazing. I, cause Stefania and I have done two movies together and I really think she's the best actress of our age group. Like definitely like for me, it's she's like a incredible. hands down. She's incredible. You'll do two takes with her and I'll just be like riveted. I mean, that scene in the park, it was like, she did like one or two. T I mean, it was just like, you just kind of get chills watching her. She's also one of my best friends. Um, and so I think she really trusted me and I really trusted her. And this movie is obviously super intimate. And so we had, you know, months and months of conversation, really years and years of conversations about this movie and me like begging her to do it. It's like, please do it. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to do it without you. Uh, and then Tommy, I did my friend Dahmer with him and we became best friends. Uh, and this role is a tricky role where you kind of hate him and you kind of... Um, then feel terrible for him and you kind of love him. And I, I needed someone who I felt like, who can be hated and loved and also be, and I was like, Tommy. <laughs> Tommy's the guy. Uh, and he kind of came in and just totally encapsulated the per I mean, it was crazy. When he dyed his hair blonde, he started talking like that and he stayed like that. And after the movie, for like four, maybe four months, he was dressing like that and hoodies and joggers and all this stuff. And I was like, and he had a gold chain on. And I sat and I was like, <laughs> Russell? I'm like, why are you still? The movie's over. He's like, yeah, I can't stop. I just like can't stop being this guy. It was very funny. It's like Daniel Day-Lewis or something. <laughs> All right, we have another question from someone who has not identified um, themselves. So if this is you and you want to be identified, let us know. So mysterious. Uh, who's your favorite screenwriter and why? Oh, my favorite screenwriter? Yeah. Oh, that's such a good question. Buck Henry comes to mind. Um, oh, wow. I think Ingmar Bergman. Bergman is my favorite. Um, or maybe the Darden brothers. Um, they, th I just love their scripts. I think they're, uh, there's like these little events that happen and then it carries you into such a dramatic event, um, at such a dramatic climax about this seemingly small, um, quaint event and it just explodes. And I guess I love, it. I love Milos Forman. Um, obviously, Martin Scorsese uh, and Paul Schrader and kind of the, all the guys, all the normal, amazing people. Uh, I'm trying to think of like who else. Oh, oh my God. I mean, I love Lee Chang Dong so much and I love the way he writes so much. And um, Mitaguchi, um, the Ugetsu, like just as a script, it works so well and so, oh, Kieslowski, I love um, Christoph Kieslowski. I guess that's probably good. That's a lot of names. That's a lot of names, sorry. That's a lot of names. <laughs> oh, oh, of course, John Cassavetti. But it's funny because screenwriter doesn't come to mind because he did so much improv. And, um, but that's been my favorite comparison. And that's the one that a lot of people have said John Cassavetti. This movie reminds them of that. And, because a woman under the influence and, um, you know, and husbands. I mean, a, a, all his movies just really seem to, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, as someone who writes and directs and acts just from um, a time perspective, time and energy. I'm just wondering where do you find that? I, I don't even know what it is. Like it's just, there's so much, like I can't, ha and the music, how do you, where do you find the, the energy and the wherewithal to, um, I mean, I know it's your, it's your job, it's your passion, but it just seems so difficult and, yeah. and, um, watching the credits and seeing your name attached to so many different things. I was like, how did this person do all of these things? Um, I have no friends. That's literally it. I just have no friends. And, uh, and th uh, these are my, these, this movie were, they were like my friends, the people in the movie. And I just fell in love with them. And so, uh, it's kind of sad to push it out into the world because, you know, even if people like it or people don't like it, it doesn't really matter because it's, it just doesn't feel like a thing yet, and I kind of refuse to believe it. It's like they're all these little, I don't know, all these little marble pieces of me, um, all these characters. So I guess where I find is that I feel like a lot of people are uh, put on the earth to do something, and it's like kind of cliche and lame, And but I do feel like it's the only thing I care about, and it's all I think about all day is just movies and acting and music and it's like it's like these you know just bright colors in my brain i can't get rid of them so uh i might as well just keep making movies even if they're terrible it doesn't really matter to me it's kind of like an itch i need to scratch or i'm gonna end up in a mental institution <laughs> <laughs> um so as we are in a room full of actors and we're at SAG-AFTRA, 
what is the project that um, got you your SAG card? Do you remember? Ooh, that's a really good question. I actually, I don't know. Um, I think it probably was Naked Brothers Band. I think I had to get it for um, the Nickelodeon show. Uh, but I don't know. I um, I'm really not good at that stuff. I uh, I just even thought, do I have a SAG card? I th- but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I do. Uh, but I'm not sure. I think I think it was Naked Brothers Band um, when I was a kid for Nickelodeon. So we are unfortunately just about out of time. We okay. have one more question, but then you guys are going back to Alex's house, so it's fine. Um, yeah, exactly. We're gonna have fun. <laughs> uh, if you could, because again, room of actors, right? What is the one piece of advice? as an actor or director um, that you would give to other actors? Well, I'm like, you guys are all like definitely older and probably more experienced and much smarter than I am, so I'd probably ask you guys advice because I'm like 12. But um, I guess the only advice I have is that um, everybody at every single step in my career has basically told me every single reason why things shouldn't, work for me and why I shouldn't make this movie and why I shouldn't be an actor and why I'm just a Nickelodeon kid or I'm just then I was a horror kid and then I'm just oh are you gonna be able to it's just everything every step of the way it seems like the world is trying to just like crush you sort of um and I guess my only advice is like it takes a lot 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 of effort to have faith in movies and have faith in being an actor and have faith in that doing good work is enough it doesn't people don't have to fucking see it it just it, it just matters that we're making it and i guess my only advice is that like in the past year i've decided you know what that is that's my thing that is my goal now and no matter what happens no matter you know if i nobody remembers me in 10 years and nobody whatever i'm gonna keep doing the art that means a lot to me and i'm gonna keep doing the art that i can watch and at least fall asleep at night that i gave every part of myself i gave everything i had so fuck everybody who says anything bad and because because i'm saying that's what i did you know i gave myself so that's my advice is just fuck everybody else just keep doing it <laughs> those are that, those are good closing words i think that and very good advice thank you so much for being here thank you guys so much for coming